Good morning. This is Thursday, September. I almost said August again. I'm going to have to get off of that. September the 3rd. And we're going to be talking today about boldness to convict. Yesterday we talked about boldness convicts. But today we're going to talk about boldness to convict. We're going to be looking at Acts chapter 2 again. And so get your Bibles and have them ready so that after we pray that we can begin. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the boldness that you give us through the Holy Spirit in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Boldness that we don't have to live in fear and operate by fear, but boldness in the Spirit that we can stand firm in our faith and that we can boldly proclaim and admonish in the name of Jesus. For it's in his name we pray today. Amen. Boldness to convict. And that's different than boldness convicts. Uh, we have boldness so that the Holy Spirit can use us. Second uh, Acts, the second chapter, starting with verse 1, we see that there is a unified, in, we're unified in purpose. Okay? It says, when the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. Okay? They were all together, continued together, abiding together uh, in one place. Uh, they weren't scattered all over the place. The apostles, uh, the 120, were there praying, uh, obeying Jesus, doing what he asked them to do, and they were unified in purpose. The purpose was to receive the power from on high that they had been promised. So they had a unity here. And this is before the Holy Spirit became upon them. They were unified, obeying Jesus and what he asked them to do. Then in verse 2, we see that they are empowered in purpose. They're not only unified, but they're empowered. It says, And suddenly there came from heaven the sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Remember, they're together in one place, continuing, waiting on this power. And suddenly it comes. It was Yahweh's timing. They had to wait on him. Uh, <clears throat> they couldn't just say, okay, it's going to come next Tuesday at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, so we're going to go about our business and we'll all show up together and pray then. No, they had no idea. It was when it was when Yahweh determined it was time. Uh, it says he came as a rushing mighty wind. Uh, it was his way. They didn't know how he was going to do it. They didn't know what was going to happen. They were just told to sit and wait. Too many times we as believers and churches, uh, the assembling of the body of Christ, we have to have a plan. We have to have it laid out for us. We want to know all the details. Uh, we have committee meetings, and God doesn't operate that way. When he's ready, he does the work, and he doesn't question us about how to do it. He does it the way he planned it, and he wants it to work, because he knows if he does it that way, the results will be fabulous. So it's, it's his time and his way. And it says... And divided tongues as a fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. Because they obeyed and because they waited on him, not knowing what was going to happen, he sent the power on them. He did it. It was that they didn't work it up. They didn't go to some uh, praise and worship service. Uh, they didn't have to have someone standing there speaking to them. They just waited patiently and prayed for him to do what he'd promised to do. Oh, that the church of Jesus Christ would learn to wait patiently and pray for God to do what he promised to do. Because he always comes through if, he, if we do. So they were empowered. God empowered them in purpose. Okay? Then in verse 4, it says, And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Okay? <clears throat> this word filled, they were overflowing with the Spirit of God. They were filled beyond capacity with the Spirit of God. 
uh, as believers in Jesus Christ, Scripture teaches that when we believe in Jesus Christ and, and place our lives in His hands through faith, that He sends His Spirit to indwell us. And we get all of His Spirit all at one time. But I have to continually crucify myself, and we've talked about that, so that I might be filled with His Spirit to capacity and overflowing. And that's what happened to the disciples. They denied themselves and gave themselves to prayer and obedience to Jesus, and they were filled with his spirit. They were filled for purpose, okay? Uh, he says he gave them utterance. Utterance of what? To boldly proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. To boldly admonish believers. To boldly speak the truth in love. He gave them of utterance, and this was evidenced by the speaking in tongues. That was a sign that this was the power of God. It wasn't from Satan. It wasn't from anywhere else. This was what God had promised, and the speaking in tongues was the sign of that. So we see here that the apostles weren't just told by Jesus, you need to go out and share the good news. They weren't just uh, turned loose on the world. They were given the boldness to bring conviction. You say, well, we're not supposed to convict. That's the Holy Spirit's job. We're not they filled with the Holy Spirit? Does the Holy Spirit not abide in believers? What is the work of the Holy Spirit? We'll say, oh, comfort. Yeah, he comforts. To teach. Yeah, he teaches. But Jesus said when his spirit comes, he will, what, convict the world of righteousness and judgment and sin. The Holy Spirit's work is to conviction to bring repentance and faith in Jesus Christ. He's here to reveal our sins to us that we might be saved, to fill us that we might live for Jesus. So if that's the work of the Holy Spirit and he indwells in me, why should I be ashamed to boldly be used by him to convict through the preaching of the word, through the teaching of the word, through conversation with brothers and sisters in Christ or our neighbors who don't believe, that conviction comes. When Jesus walked in the room, just his presence brought conviction. The question for today is, when you and I as believers in Jesus Christ, born again by faith in the Holy Spirit, when we walk in the room, do people get convicted just by our presence? That's the way it was for Jesus. It should be that way for his followers. I hope you're blessed today as you seek to be filled with the Spirit that you might be bold to convict the world of its sin in love and mercy. Be blessed today as you live for him.